Hey everyone. Hi, how are you? I hope you're well today. Uh, welcome to Bridget's Kitchen. <laughs> I am spending the day today in my kitchen doing lots and lots of recipe testing. And as I'm testing recipes and I'm doing different bits and pieces, I thought to myself, let's just turn that camera on because there's a few things that I'm doing today that you may find not just exciting, but you also may find helpful as well. So, um, what I am actually producing today in my kitchen, there's a number of things that I've actually got on the go, um, but I'm gonna, what I'm going to be showing you guys is firstly how to make my cauliflower wraps. And um, if you think about like a normal wrap where you put all the fillings inside, this one is made out of cauliflower and just a few spices and seasonings and stuff. It's literally just a cauliflower wrap. I mean, it's pretty amazing. And I think it's pretty awesome because what that means is that you can have something that's almost... Um, bread like I think is a good way to put it it's almost bread like and because it's almost bread like you can put all your fillings inside of it wrap it up and feel like you're having something delicious and you're not missing out so uh, I'll be showing you my cauliflower wraps but before I do that I've got a few things else I want to show you because I said to you I was I've spent the day like just like testing lots and lots of recipes because as you all know what's coming up is Christmas and Christmas, by the way, I am like, if you could put, you know, a, a hat and jingle bells on me, I'd be the happiest person for the rest of my life. I really, really like Christmas. So um, I am test, currently testing lots and lots of Christmas recipes for us. Um, because I, I, I figure that, like, you might be in the, in the school of thought that when it comes to Christmas time, you're just going to go crazy. Your diet's going to take a back seat. Or your healthy eating plans and take about back seat and you're just going to go for it and i totally get where you're coming from and if you're in that frame of thinking then just do what you need to do because you know how to get back on the wagon you know how to get back into eating healthy and to lose potentially those you know kilos that we may put on over christmas but what i'm thinking and this is where i'm going a little bit different uh potentially is that i'm i'm trying to come up with recipes that we can feed not just ourselves of course, we're number one. Got to feed yourself first. But also you can feed your family and friends that um, they will have no concept that it's healthy. They're just eating delicious food. So I'm attempting to come up with the recipes just like that. And in the last um, day, 24 hours, I wonder if I can grab it for you. Just I'm just going that way to grab, grab what I cooked. In the last 24 hours, folks, can you see that? It's, I know it doesn't look that great because we're not very good cut. We're not very good. Um, oh, let me pick it up. Let me just let me just pick it up. I made this. Can you see this? <laughs> this is, by the way, God, it's dense. That is a gluten-free, oh, sticky too, sugar-free, um, dairy-free, no added fat Christmas cake. That was one. Mm, of the versions I did because by the way oh god I love Christmas I love Christmas cake so that's Christmas cake but as well as that one I also tried out this one here now this one here is once again it's gluten free it's dairy free it's sugar free it's got no added fat but it's also egg free as well so this is like a vegan version of a Christmas cake and I fed it to um, my oldest daughter today Chrissy and she was just like are you sure, Mum? Are you sure you didn't stick other stuff in there? <laughs> she could not believe it. She just said to me, Mum, it just tastes like fruitcake. And it tastes like a really delicious, moist fruitcake. So I'll be sharing that recipe with you guys, as well as this one here, which is like my ultimate Christmas cake. I'll be sharing that recipe with you guys. So I did that today and yesterday. I'm just going to put it back on the bench. I also made an amazing lasagna. You <laughs> go. Best lasagna you've ever tried. Dairy-free, gluten-free, sugar-free, by the way, here. Wonderful. And I made a couple of salads as well. But the big thing that I was making today, and the reason why you are watching today, is that I was making a cauliflower wrap. So the cauliflower wrap is really simple to do. Very, very simple. So the first thing you need to do is um, raw cauliflower, by the way. I know you can buy cauliflower rice already made, like in the supermarket. There's no reason, honest, honest to goodness, unless you do not own a grater or you do not own a food processor, sorry for the middle finger, food processor, much better, 
you can make your own cauliflower rice. It's really, really simple. Take a big cauliflower, raw cauliflower, cut it into florets, pop those florets into a food processor, or take a box grater and grate it on there if you don't have a food processor. And what you'll end up with once you've processed that is you'll end up with cauliflower rice. So you're looking for the, the consistency of cauliflower rice, by the way. That's the consistency we're going for there. Once it's at this stage, you can see that. Once it's at that stage, we pop it into a microwavable bowl. I'll try and say that three times. Micro waveable bowl I've got my fate I've had this bowl for like 10 years my favorite plastic bowl uh, we pop the our, our cauliflower rice into our microwavable bowl it goes into the microwave and then I cook it on high it's about 200 grams of cauliflower in here raw I cook that on high for two and a half minutes once it's done that you basically have cauliflower rice you could take this now and you could mix spices through it and all sorts of different lovely things and you could have dinner quite frankly you could also take it at, at, at this stage now and you could pop it into your wok and you could stir fry it and make fried rice as well with cauliflower. That's cauliflower rice. It's that simple. By the way, if you're wondering whether cauliflower rice freezes, it doesn't freeze well. Well, actually it freezes fine. Anything can freeze fine. It's the defrosting where it becomes a little bit of an issue. So um, I don't suggest you um, freeze your cauliflower rice because on defrosting your cauliflower rice, the integrity of the rice is not great. In other words, you're gonna get soggy rice, like waterlogged rice. Don't do it, is what I'm saying. Keep it in the fridge. So we've got our cauliflower rice here. What we need to do now, is we need to extract some of the liquid that is in that cauliflower rice. I mean, it doesn't look like there's li liquid in there, but trust me, there is liquid in there. So I'm gonna bring the, I'm gonna try and bring the camera down to you guys so you can see. Apologies if I, no, I went up. I'm going down, I'm going down, here we go. All right, we're on the bench, too far, too far, too far. All right, so cauliflower rice. We need to extract the liquid out of it. The way that we do that is we take ourselves up a clean, brand new clean tea towel, and quite a large one as well. Put your tea towel down there, and then taking your cooked cauliflower rice, put it onto the tea towel. I know this sounds weird, and it's probably not something you're used to, but just bear with me here. Put it all onto that tea towel. What we're going to do now is we're going to draw the edges of the tea towel up to make like a little package. Now, by the way, this is not hot out of the microwave. I've allowed this to cool down a little bit. You need to allow it to cool down. Otherwise, you're going to burn your fingers, which is not a good look. So, let it cool down for a little bit. Taking back my bowl, what I need to do now is I'm just taking that cauliflower and I'm just going to begin to draw the tea towel in. Can you see what's coming up? You wouldn't even think that was possible, right? Because what I'm attempting to do, and I'm applying a lot of pressure. Like, if you can see my face right now, it's potentially red. <laughs> it's like really red. Because I'm like, ah! But you can see, look how much liquid we're getting out of there. You wouldn't think it. If there is more than one person in the house with you, get them to hold one end and you hold the other end and you both squeeze together. And you just draw out that liquid. The reason why we're drawing out the liquid when we're making wraps, and this is also the exact same principle if we're making a cauliflower pizza base. The reason why we're drawing out the liquid is because if we were to attempt to bake that now and to make a wrap, it would just be a big soggy mess and we don't want that. So we draw, look, God, you keep on squeezing. You just keep, uh, keep on squeezing. <laughs> like seriously, you think there's no more liquid left and you're like, oh, a couple more drops. How wonderful is that? So keep on squeezing. Already I've probably got a good 150 to 200 mils of liquid that has come out of that cauliflower. All right, I'm done. Oh, I'm spent. <laughs> I don't think I could do that anymore. Let me see if I can bring the camera. Oh, it's going down. Here we go. There we are. <laughs> the face was completely red. It's okay to have a red face when you're doing this because it requires a really decent amount of energy from you to get the liquid. Can you see how much we've got in there? Out of the cauliflower. All right, so I'm gonna just I'm just gonna dump that in the um, in the sink. We don't need that. Let's go back down again. Oh, I got that right the first time. All right, here we go. So cauliflower out of that clean tea towel, then just goes into my bowl like that. 
You know what? I should probably get a clear bowl because then you guys can totally see what it is I'm doing. Where's my clear? Just start. Just down here. Better, right? Ah, oh, there we go. Much better. So I'm now get my my squeezed cauliflower in the bowl. All I need to do now is think about adding some flavors to this. You could um, simply not add flavors, but then, yeah, it's a bit boring. We, we, we should add flavors. So the flavors I'm gonna add into here, and um, the flavors that I have, the flavors that I love, by the way, they're like some of my favorite flavors. So I'm gonna add some, can you, is that backwards? It's, if it's backwards, I apologize, it says garam masala. We're gonna add about a teaspoon, which is about that much. That's how I do my measurements, how bad is that? Teaspoon of that, garam masala. Garam masala is a combination of wonderful spices. It's, it's fantastic. If you see garam masala in the supermarket, buy it. It is the business. All right, so garam masala goes in there. My absolute favorite spice backwards, cumin powder, or however you wanna call it. Let's not go there. If you're laughing right now while I'm saying that, I'm laughing too on the inside. Cumin powder, say that slowly, <laughs> goes in, about a teaspoon. That was about a teaspoon, right? And I also have, because I love the old cumin, that's embarrassing as well, I actually have a toasted cumin seed, so I'm just gonna sprinkle those on as well. So now we've added flavor to our cauliflower, which is so important because that's what life is all about, having a little flavor. But let's not forget, I'm walking over here, Sorry guys, I'm going to add some, I just need to grab my um, Himalayan salt, which is over here. So I'm going to add a little sprinkle of Himalayan salt to it. I'm also going to add a little bit of uh, cracked black pepper. And then to bring this all together, we need to bind it. I'm going to add an egg. Now if you are wanting the recipe for this, I'm going to pop it um, at the top of this video as soon as I've finished recording it so you guys all have the recipe. So um, you can make these cauliflower wraps because really they are quite fabulous. And they're not that hard to do. Once you've done the rice and you've done the squeeze, put on the squeeze which is really important, you add your flavours, that is basically it. That's all that is involved when it comes to our cauliflower rice. And now that I'm mixing all those flavors together, what I'm actually looking for, I'm looking for this to be moist, but not wet. Definitely not dry and crumbly. Because the next stage, let me just grab up the next thing for you guys, is we need to consider how we cook our cauliflower wraps, which is really important. So um, here's a little mix I made earlier. Uh, which is at the right consistency. I did add a couple of eggs. I, 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 the only reason why I'm not using the one over there is because I ran out of eggs. So this is actually one that I made earlier to show you the correct consistency. Can you hear it squishing? <laughs> That's really weird, but can, if you can hear it squishing, you know that it's wet. See, I can, I can squeeze it and it holds together like that, which means I'm going to be able to mold it into a wrap. I'll show you what the other one looks like so you know what not to do. This one needs more eggs. Remember, I ran out of eggs. So look at that. It's, it's kind of crumbly. It's not holding together. Whereas that is the consistency you're looking for. Squeeze it and it holds together. And we do that by adding egg whites and egg yolks. As I said, I will share the recipe at the top of this video for you guys so you can have it. So that's the consistency that you're looking for for your wraps. Not that. Not crumbly, yeah? Got that. That's a really important step. That's why I wanted to show you guys. So, whoops. My wrap is a uh, consistency here in my bowl. It's looking really, really good. So then I take, and, and the, the mixture that I've got in my recipe, I think the one I'm going to share with you guys makes six wraps. That's a good amount of wraps, right? That's that's good amount of wraps. So taking a blob, blob, let's put it down can you guys see that I can't see so I can't tell whether you can you see you probably can see that now so putting a blob and we're gonna make six even blobs so whatever the mixture that I've given you I can't remember how much it is you will get six wraps out of that so I've got my blob on a piece of baking paper this is non-stick baking paper or parchment as it's known because of course we don't want it to stick to the um to the sheet and now I've got my blob on there just press it out and you want it to be quite thin and quite even and ideally in a circle because wraps tend to be circular 
but it doesn't have to be perfect. Like seriously, guys, if it's if you've got an oblong, there ain't nothing wrong with an oblong. We all need to be like respectful of the oblongs <laughs> because it's not actually about the look. You know, guys, it's about the taste. But if you can fashion it into a round, which is kind of what I've done here, you're winning the wrap race. If you, but like I said, if you've got an oblong, who cares, right? Who, who cares? If you've got a square, who cares? Squares are actually really cool too. They're pretty funky. It's up to you the shape you have here with your cauliflower. But look how thin that is. That is almost as thin as the, the paper or the, the, the baking paper that I've got it on. It's super thin and it's super even. So now that it's this stage, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pop it into my oven behind me there and it's gonna cook for 10 minutes on 180 degrees, which is 350 degrees Fahrenheit. 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, I'm gonna take one of these little jobbies Ta -da, really thin spatula and I'm going to be able to just go underneath it and then flip it over so you want to then flip the wrap over if you don't have one of these really look how flexible that is I, I, this is like a chef's special most chefs have this by the way if you don't have one of these the next thing that you can do and it's a really great trick actually is to take a piece of baking paper Oh, let me show you exactly because if you if I don't do it exactly it'll be it might be a little bit confusing. So take a piece of baking paper and place it onto the top of the cooked 10 minute cooked wrap and then flip everything over and then when you flip it over, I can't flip it over because this is raw, when you flip it over you are then able to peel this piece off. Does that make sense guys? You can peel that piece off. So if you don't have one of those wonderful, really flexible spatulas, put a piece of baking paper down on the, on the wrap when it's been cooked for 10 minutes, flip everything over, and then peel off the top layer, and then what we do is we pop it back into the oven for another five minutes to cook. And after those five minutes are done, so 15 minutes in total, what we get is that. So we get this. We get a very delicate, by the way, little cauliflower wrap. So we're able to put stuff in there. And what I thought I would put in there today, which is so exciting for me personally because I love these, is I'm making a fish taco. So I'm using my cauliflower wrap and you can put anything you want in it. Like seriously guys, you go for it. It's up to you what you decide goes into your taco or into your cauliflower wrap. I've decided that today I'm going to be doing fish because I love fish tacos. I've been to um, southern, the very tip of Southern California as it turns into Tijuana. So the entire coastline are famous for their fish tacos, like famous. And I had my first fish taco there with my husband, Mahei, and I vowed that me and him would go back there time and time again to have those fish tacos because they were phenomenal. So um, the fish taco that I'm doing today has got a couple of different ingredients that I pre-made. The first thing that I pre-made for you guys, and it's up to you, remember what you, how you stuff your cauliflower wrap now that it's at this point. I'm going to be make, stuffing mine with a little um, tomato salsa that I have there. And literally I have fresh tomato chopped up. I have red onion in there. And then all I'm going to do to finish off my salsa is I'm going to take just a little bit of lemon juice and I'm just rolling it on the board there just to help to release the juices. So I'm going to do a little bit of, of lemon juice over my salsa. It's so easy to make fresh salsas and if you are on a diet and you're just using the tomato and onion and a little bit of lemon juice squeezed over just like that which is going to give it a lovely acidic hit a little bit of salt a little bit of pepper you could also add chilies at this stage but I thought um, what would be really nice just to kind of add into into my salsa is I would take a few um, fresh herbs just like that and give them a little bit of a chop nothing fancy we're literally just adding stuff I always have fresh herbs in my kitchen and herbs are such a wonderful way to be able to add flavor into something so the herbs go in there and that's it there's no need for oils if you if you like it a bit spicy like I said you could add your chili that's gonna be our tomato salsa which is gonna go onto our wrap the other thing that I've done 
before I turn the video on is I'm, I cooked a little bit of my fish. So I have just a piece of um, white fish here. I'm using barramundi and I popped it into this little baking paper and I cooked it in the oven while the wraps were cooking. Same time frame, right? So that is my fish component to my taco. And the last thing I have here, no, it's not actually the second to last, is I've made just a very light um, cabbage ground up. I sliced up some cabbage here really, really fine. So this is almost gonna be like a, I suppose like a little coleslaw, taking some more fresh herbs. We're going to chop them through again, nice and fine, because then they're going to go through our cabbage, which is there. Um, you could add different types of, of seasonings, depending on spices, depending on what you like. Already, the fact that, that I've got this just, and literally the herbs in here was basil and coriander. If you don't like coriander, you could add mint, you could add, um, you could add chives, you could add anything you want. But already, can you just see how wonderfully fresh and gorgeous that is? Now, if you're wondering how I got my coleslaw to look that thin, I did not chop it by hand. I cheated. Let me show you how I cheated. I have one of these. It's called a mandolin. And what you do is you take your big piece of cabbage and you run it down the mandolin and you will get slices like this, like that thin. They're amazing because because I I can't I don't know about you but I can't do that by hand and raw cabbage is delicious when it's nice and thin not so great when it's in its big chunks and you want nice and thin chunks so the the type of um, mandolin that I use is a chef uh, style mandolin um, so a lot of chefs use this in fact one of my mentors um, Tetsuya Wakuda who's is I, arguably one of the best chefs in the world he introduced me to this particular style of mandolin it's called a Ben Reiner. I, I can't show you the name because it'll be back to front. Spelled B E N R I N E R. It is a Japanese style um, mandolin. It comes with different attachments, so you can make thin strips or ribbon strips or or um, matchsticks or whatever you want. And um, sh you will find a lot of chefs that use this. It's just a really really good mandolin. So a Ben Reiner. So that's um, the mandolin that I'm using to get my coleslaw to this stage. Now then what I would do with my coleslaw is I would um, either mix my lime and tamari dressing through there, or maybe a little bit of my zesty dressing, or what other dressing do I have here? I just have my cider dressing, which is cider and inulin, would go through my, my little coleslaw. And that's about it, it's time to fill our taco. So let's do that. So taking up your Taco here, you're quite, look how pliable, isn't that cool? Look how pliable that is. Taking up your taco. Let's now add some of our coleslaw down the bottom. And the best way to do this is you can put it on the bench and then just put all the ingredients in. I actually find if you hold it in clean hands, ideally, clean hands, it's really easy to fill. So our coleslaw goes in there already. I'm like, yeah, that looks good, I'll eat that. But the next thing we're gonna do is I'm just flaking the barramundi that I cooked already in the oven. And if you're wondering what the green stuff is on the barramundi, I'll just put a little bit of ground wakami on there, which gives it a little bit more flavor. So I'm flaking the barramundi there. And then I'm gonna add some of, actually you know what, fingers are better. Fingers are better here. I'm gonna add some of the salsa. That wonderful, fresh salsa that I've just made goes on top. And then last but not least, Previous to the video, I made a little avocado uh, cream, aka Evo Mavo, which is literally an avocado and an egg yolk and lemon juice. And we're going to finish off this gorgeous fish taco with that wonderful line of avocado cream or Mavo. You can then also just do a little sprinkle of salt if you want to. And that is lunch. A couple of those, and you know what guys? We are winning. So um, I'm gonna take a photo of this now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the video off because I need to photograph this. Because this recipe that you have seen, I've never shared it anywhere else. You're the first ones to see it. I'm about to um, take a photo and I'm probably gonna post this online on Bridget's Kitchen tomorrow for everyone. But I will post the, the recipe for the cauliflower wraps today for you guys, because you're watching the video. I'll post it under the video now. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're all well. This is gonna get photographed and then it's gonna get eaten. <laughs> That's all I gotta say about that. All right guys, take care, talk soon.